Hello there guys, welcome to one of my live videos, um, and on uh, this uh, video uh, tonight, I am uh, going to be giving you a um, bit of an update uh, for uh, the Liverpool-Manchester uh, United game, which is of course uh, next Sunday, um, half past four uh, kick-off um, at Anfield. Of course, uh, this is uh, not uh, your preview, uh, the preview uh, will be coming uh, later on um, in the week. I think the preview you know, will either be uh, Thursday um, or Friday. As you all know um, as well, I will be uh, giving you uh, my reaction uh, to Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's uh, press conference, uh, building him um, up uh, to the game and that. But on this video, I'm going to, you know, say, you know, can Manchester United uh, next Sunday end uh, Liverpool's um, unbeaten uh, run um, in the Premier League? Because, of course, uh, now uh, Liverpool um, are unbeaten in 38 Premier League games. If they do uh, beat us uh, next Sunday, it will extend their unbeaten run to uh, 39. And Liverpool, of course, um, are unbeaten in 51 Premier League uh, games um, at Anfield. So, obviously, you know, Anfield um, is a fortress. And the last time uh, Liverpool uh, lost um, at Anfield, was it back um, in September uh, 2018? You know, they did uh, lose uh, to Crystal Palace uh, by uh, two goals uh, to one. Uh, Liverpool, of course, um, are obviously, you know, you've got to say now, uh, the best uh, team um, in England. You know, obviously, you know, they're sitting at uh, top um, in the Premier League. You know, they've won 20 out of 21 games so far. You know, we're the only team that have taken uh, many uh, points from them so far this season in the Premier League, you know, because obviously, you know, the game at Old Trafford earlier on in the season uh, was 1-1. Uh, uh, they are uh, 16 uh, points um, in front um, of Leicester. They are now 14 points um, in front um, of Man City. But they have obviously now uh, got um, a game um, in hand. Man City, of course... Uh, one comprehensively uh, today, you know, they beat um, Aston Villa uh, by uh, six goals uh, to one um, at Villa Park. You know, obviously, you know, Pep Guardiola not too long ago gave his um, overarching view on City's uh, title um, ambitions and he's actually not given up on the title. But, you know, City, of course, um, are going uh, for uh, runners up. You know, the goals uh, were from uh, Marez, he scored two. Aguero um, had got an hat-trick in the game. Also, um, I think the other goal was from uh, Gabriel Jesus. I think Kevin De Bruyne got a couple of assists. Marez got an assist as well as two goals. Uh, David Silva um, had got an assist. I think also um, Aguero um, had got um, an assist um, in the game. You know, but that um, was um, a very, very uh, good uh, result uh, from um, a Man City uh, perspective in that. You know, so Liverpool, like I said, still uh, remain uh, 14 uh, points um, in front um, of, you know, uh, Man City in that. Uh, Liverpool have, uh, are on course, you know, to win uh, their first, you know, ever uh, Premier League. And of course, um, it will be Liverpool's uh, fourth uh, major um, honour overall under Jurgen Klopp because obviously, you know, Liverpool have, um, you know, won uh, the FIFA Club World Cup recently. You know, they also won the Super Cup earlier on in the season against uh, Chelsea. And, you know, they also uh, won uh, the Champions League uh, last season. And that. So, yeah, Jurgen Klopp has so far, you know, won uh, three major honours um, at Liverpool. But Liverpool are set to end uh, their 30 -year, year uh drought because they haven't uh, won it um, all in all uh, for them um, around uh, 30 -year years. But, you know, like I said, you know, Man United and Liverpool is the biggest game um, in English football. You know, they are the two most successful clubs um, in England, you know, historically, you know, reflects on the amount of silverware that uh, both teams um, have won. You know, we've obviously you know, won 20 titles, 13 Premier Leagues. You've got Liverpool have won um, 18 um, Old First Divisions. Obviously, you know, the Liverpool have won six European Cups. You know, we've won three European Cups, you know. But yeah, you know, and um, obviously, you know, the game um, at Anfield uh, last season was 3-1 uh, uh, to Liverpool. Uh, that was in December 2018, and obviously, you know, reflecting um, on that game, that had ended Jose Mourinho's uh, two-and-a-half-year tenure um, at Man United. Um, that was an embarrassment in that game last season at Anfield. You know, Liverpool won 3-1. They had around, was it 36 or 37 uh, shots in the game? I think, you know, we had around uh, five uh, shots um, in the game and that. So hopefully, you know, next Sunday we can see a total comparison to a, compar a total comparison performance, you know, to the one uh, we uh, saw uh, last season um, at Anfield, you know. But it's going to be um, a very, very um, good uh, game and that. But, you know, don't fully, you know, disregard it. You know, I think a lot of United fans will go into that game very, very sceptical and that. You know, but you never, never know. Anything uh, can happen um, in football. And we do seem to ra raise our game against, you know, elite opposition. Because I've said, you know, this season that we've done really, really well um, against them elite opposition. You know, obviously, you know, we're beating Chelsea at the beginning of the season 4-0. You know, we also beaten Leicester at home 1-0. You know, we drew Liverpool early on the season. You know, we beat Tottenham. You know, we also uh, beat Man City. 
You can say them two uh, games uh, saved um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's managerial uh, tenure um, at the football club. So you just uh, never, never uh, know um, in football. But, you know, Liverpool can afford to lose games anywhere. And obviously now we're still uh, win uh, the league, you know. Um, Liverpool, of course, uh, did uh, win um, at the weekend um, against uh, Tottenham, you know. That was uh, yesterday. They're beating them uh, by uh, one goal uh, to nil. Uh, obviously, you know, the only goal of the game came uh, from Roberto Firmino. Um, obviously, it was uh, Mohamed Salah that had uh, got uh, the assist. You know, I thought Liverpool dominated periods of the game. I thought in the second half, though, you know, Tottenham, you know, came out, you know, good. Tottenham had a lot of chances in the game, but obviously, you know, their chances, you know, were, were very, very um, wasteful. You know, but um, yeah, so that was um, a very, very uh, good uh, win uh, from um, a Liverpool uh, perspective. You know, you know, and um, yeah, and um, you know, we beat in uh, Norwich uh, by uh, four goals uh, to nil. You know, obviously, you know, Rashford scored two goals for us. Uh, on his 200th appearance, 200th appearance for the club. That was very, very good. Uh, obviously, Juan Mata provided a couple of assists, so he was very pivotal. You know, also to, um, you know, Mason Green, we've got his name on the score sheet. He made an impact when he came off the bench. Also to uh, Anthony uh, Martial um, had scored and that. So, yeah, we had a very, very um, good uh, win um, against uh, Norwich. But to be quite honest with you, um, I don't think we're going to beat Liverpool. I think Liverpool are too good for us. And I'm very, very sceptical, you know, that we are uh, currently, you know, going to uh, get out uh, from uh, the game. You know, I am uh, definitely, but uh, we've just uh, got to uh, basically now uh, see uh, what um, happens. Um, obviously, you know, we've got some injuries and, you know, some people believe they've got their own, own overarching view on it. You know, why we've been inconsistent for the vast majority of this season is obviously, you know, you can, you can say reflecting on the amount of injuries we've had. Also, you know, we've got a lot of young players, you know, that are uh, developing that are developing um, and trying to improve. But my overarching view on it, like, the injuries is not excusable, you know. It's not excusable, you know, because we should be much more um, of a commanding uh, position, you know, uh, than we're in uh, now, you know, uh, to be fair. Um, obviously, we know next Sunday, Pob is not going to be in action because he's out for another couple of weeks. Obviously, we know that Tom Way is not uh, going to be um, involved um, in the game because he's um, out um, until uh, February. And reflecting on their injuries, uh, Pob is, I think, is an ankle injury. But Tom Way is, is uh, he's damaged ligaments um, in his knee. But we look very exposed in that midfield, uh, reflecting um, on their um, injuries. You know, the only midfielders we can rely on at the moment is Fred, Andres Pereira, uh, Matic. You know, definitely Pereira and Matic are two liabilities. And then, um, of course, um, you know, Fossil Mensu is also being considered for that midfield role when he does uh, come back from injury. Because I think, actually, you know, Fossil Mensu and so too Eric Bay um, are now back from injury because they've obviously no beat but they were both out with knee injuries uh, for quite um, a long time but I think on Friday uh, there was a uh, play there for the under uh, 20 uh, threes and that so it's good you know that they've uh, come back I think you know Rojo um, is still out you know but yeah, um, obviously, you know, before we play Liverpool anyway, you know, we've got to, you know, play uh, the game um, against the uh, Wolves in the FA Cup uh, third round uh, replay. And you can maybe take into account now and say, you know, maybe the FA Cup um, is um, a pr priority uh, for us, you know, because obviously it's looking very unlikely now that we're going to win the Cowbell Cup. Uh, I did say, didn't I, before, that's the, I think that's the only chance we've got of winning uh, many uh, silverware uh, this season. But Solskjaer, not too long ago, spoken about the importance of us uh, winning uh, silverware, you know, because we've lacked silverware in the last uh, six or um, uh, seven uh, years, definitely. And also the Europa League is a priority for us because obviously the Europa League is another route to Champions League football for us. But I've got to analyse it and say we're probably not are, uh, good enough uh, to win uh, the, you know, the Europa League and that. Um, <clears throat> Uh, as you know, Liverpool, you know, they've also, you know, had some injuries um, as well. Um, and maybe, you know, reflects on the injuries that Liverpool um, have got. You know, Liverpool may consider, you know, making um, investment. You know, they may want to make, make some signings in that. Obviously, you know, to cover up, you know, with their um, injuries uh, they've currently got. But Liverpool have obviously, you know, got players coming back from injury. Uh, Shakir has just recently come back from injury. You know, Nathaniel Klein's obviously still, still out with injury for them. I think he's one of the players that Liverpool will consider um, offloading because obviously, you know, he's injury prone. Plus, uh, Trent Alexander-Arnold um, is Liverpool's uh, first choice over Nathaniel Klein. Oxley and Chamberlain's just come back from injury for Liverpool. That's good from their perspective. Um, you know, I think it did say possibly that Fabinho... 
Day Jarlovin and Joe Matip, you know, could return uh, for their game against them us uh, next Sunday. I think it's very unlikely that James Milner um, and Naby Keita, uh, you know, will be available uh, for uh, the game uh, next Sunday. So Liverpool um, have also got injuries. Uh, they've just recently, by the way, loaned the Brewster out. Uh, Brewster uh, has been, yeah, he's been loaned out, but he initially just recovered, uh, was it, uh, from um, an ankle um, injury. But yeah, Liverpool um, have had uh, quite um, a few um, injuries, you know, uh, definitely. But, um, you know, Liverpool have signed somebody already. Um, they actually, you know, signed him uh, before the January window opened. You know, obviously they signed Takumi Mina Mimo from Red Bull Salzburg for, was it, 7.25 million pounds. You know, I don't think, you know, he's going to really get his opportunities, you know, this season, you know, for Liverpool. But I think maybe, you know, next season, you know, Takumi mean me more, you know, where we'll get him in the team more. I thought he did well on his debut in Liverpool's 1-0 uh, uh, win um, against um, Everton and that, you know, so he will get uh, more uh, chances. But I can see Liverpool getting rid of quite a few players, you know, I think they'll get rid of Klein. Uh, perhaps they might get rid of um, Adam Lallana. Um, he's another one they might get rid of. You know, obviously, he's from Southampton. Liverpool have got quite a lot of Southampton, you know, players, you know, in their uh, team. You know, Lana, Virgil van Dijk, who they paid £75 million pounds for. Obviously, he's the most expensive uh, centre-half. Well, was the most expensive centre-half in the world, obviously, you know, before we got um, Harry uh, Maguire. But he's definitely the best centre-half in the world, is Virgil van Dijk. You know, obviously, they've got Sadio Mane uh, from Southampton. I think he's been in scintillating form for Liverpool. I think, you know, recently, I think he's... Being better than Mohamed Salah, I think, you know, the totally comparison, I think Salah's overall a better player than Mane, but Mane's done uh, really, really well this season, to be fair. I think Firmino recently has been in really, really good form for them. I've got to also take into account, I think Henderson's done well, uh, James Milner's done well for them. Um, obviously, you know, before um, he sustained um, an injury, um, I don't think Kite, you know, um, is too uh, bad uh, for them. But obviously, you know, Liverpool's team, and our team are totally a comparison in that because obviously our team is not is not as good um, as Liverpool's um, at the moment and you know Liverpool's brand um, of football um, is much uh, better uh, than ours but also you know the difference is you know we've spent a lot of uh, money um, on players you know over the years I think we spent nearly a billion pounds on recruiting new players into the football club you know. Not only that, you know, we've also uh, got our uh, players um, on big uh, contracts. But like I said, with Liverpool, you know, they don't overpay for players. You know, they're sensible uh, with their uh, recruitment and that. And like I said, always getting them glad core players and always, you know, overpaying for players is not always uh, the right uh, solution. That's uh, been uh, proven, definitely. And, you know, we've overpaid for players. You know, like I said, we overpaid for Maguire. You know, we paid, what, £80 million pounds for him. Even though we overpaid for him, I still think he's addressed our defensive deficiencies. Maguire's just uh, recovered from a hip injury. You know, we overpaid for Fred. You know, we paid £50 million for Fred. But I've got to say, Fred is improving as a Manchester United player, so I would be determined, you know, to give him more time at the football club. So Fred's doing well. You know, we overpaid for Pobby. You know, we paid £89 million for him. You know, so these quite um, a few uh, players uh, that we have uh, currently um, over, uh, play, uh, over overpaid for definitely in that. But if we could get a result against uh, Liverpool Liverpool uh, next Sunday, you know that would be um, a surprise. Um, I think the last time uh, we won at Anfield, uh, if I can remember rightly, we've won a few times at Anfield over the years. Don't forget, you know we beat them quite a few times under the Louis Van Gaal era. You know, I think we. Um, the last time we won there, I think it was Rooney that scored, and I think that was actually you know, back in uh, 2016. We also won there back in 2015, was it? If I'm right, I think it was back in 2015. Uh, I think we beat them 2-1, uh, one matter um, had scored uh, both goals. You know, so we have beaten them uh, quite um, a few uh, times um, at Anfield, you know, definitely. Um, obviously, at Old Trafford, you know, Liverpool struggled to win at Old Trafford. You know, I think Liverpool have only won, like, is it, twice in the last 10 years or summer or 11 years um, at Old Trafford but you know I don't uh, see us, uh, see us uh, getting out um, against Liverpool but it's a game we must win anyway against Liverpool because obviously you know we do want to keep our top four ambitions alive we're definitely still in that top four race you know we are only uh, five points uh, behind their uh, top four but like I did confirm at the start of this season that our expectations this season will be to finish in that top four and that so obviously we can get Champions League football 
But I think anyway, our aspirations, our aspirations will be that top four in the uh, next uh, couple of uh, seasons, definitely. Because I don't think you know we're going to win the league or mount any kind of title challenge up for uh, several uh, years. In that, I think for us to be back being competitive and up there challenging for major honours, you know, I think you know we need to recruit the right calibre of players uh, to uh, Manchester United. So it's very imperative that we do recruit. Um, Sorry, it's very imperative that we do get a couple of players in, in this January transfer window. Um, obviously, you know, we've got to uh, make more um, investment um, in the summer and that. And like I said, our board and Ed Woodward and that are determined to back Solskjaer in the next uh, couple of uh, windows and that. Because obviously, like I said, analysing the vast majority of this team, it isn't Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's. The vast majority of this team is Jose Mourinho's because Mourinho spent a substantial amount of the club. Mourinho spent, was it £400 million or just under £400 million on 11 players, was it? And there's still nine of those players here because obviously, you know, Lukaku and Sanchez both went to Inter Milan uh, last summer. You know, there's still players here from the Van Gaal here, but there's still obviously, you know, Matt here from the David Moyes here, and there's still about three players here from the Alex Ferguson era. You know, Young's obviously still here at the moment. Jones is still here. And of course, uh, David um, De Gea um, is still um, here. So you can say Solskjaer um, is still um, in the process um, of rebuilding. I didn't like what stemmed from Solskjaer recently, though. He's, he uh, actually you know, warned our fans that you know not many signings um, are expected um, in this uh, January transfer window. But we've definitely you know, got to um, address uh, the deficiencies um, in the squad. The midfield needs to be... We need to reinvest in the midfield. Um, despite the fact that Rashford's in scintillating form... Uh, Martial's in scintillating form and so too Daniel James has done well we still need to get a striker and I think we need to add more um, experience um, in that um, attack of uh, line and that um, you know we definitely know, need to uh, do that and Rashford's definitely got to start against Liverpool because actually you know, Rashford um, his record against the top six sides is good and he seems to you know score um, a lot um, against uh, Liverpool so he's one player that needs to play you know, Martial, don't forget, he actually scored on his debut against Liverpool uh, when we beat them 3-1 at Old Trafford uh, back under the uh, Louis uh, van Gaal uh, Marrera. And, you know, what it is, is, you know, we have got a really, really... Man United have got a good squad, and like I've said on my recent videos, Solskjaer's inheriting a good squad. There's a lot of good players in that team, but, you know, like I said, we haven't been playing as a unit. Uh, you know, we haven't been playing as a unit for the vast majority of this season. This is why, you know, we haven't been performing to the standards as we should be. This is why we haven't been uh, getting uh, positive uh, results and that, you know. But I agree, you know, there's still um, a lot of uh, deadwood at Manchester United that uh, do uh, need to be uh, moved on, uh, definitely. You know, I still think we need to get rid of another six or seven players this year. You know, obviously, there's still players I would be determined to keep. Like I said, I'd keep Rashford, keep Anthony Martial. Uh, keep McTomin way because I thought before he got injured he's done well this season for us you know um, keep Fred keep Lindelof keep the free signings that we recommended in but I think there's a lot of players there that uh, do uh, need to uh, go uh, definitely but um, like I said you know Solskjaer is totally comparison uh, to uh, Jürgen Klopp anyway you know he's obviously you know not nowhere near on Jurgen Klopp's level, you know. Overall, anywhere we're nowhere near on Liverpool's uh, level um, or uh, Man City's uh, level, but you know it's going to take us quite a long time, you know, to uh, emulate uh, to their uh, levels. But like I've said on my recent videos, when Jurgen Klopp got first recommended into Liverpool, he did nothing. He didn't exceed expectations when he first got recommended in because, like I said, his record after his first what twenty eight or twenty nine games was extremely bad. And I think it was as bad as Solskjaer's first 28 or 29 games um, at Man United and that. And obviously, you know, Liverpool were very, very sceptical at that point when he first came in, Klopp, that he would be able, you know, to elevate uh, Liverpool uh, forward. But look what he's now um, accomplished, uh, Jürgen Klopp. I think Liverpool have been, you know, dominant in the last two to three years. They've been uh, very, very dominant. You know, like I said, you know, last season, Liverpool were really unlucky not to win the Premier League. You know, they finished on 97 points. They've, you know, they lost it by one point to City. You know, obviously, you know, they came close under the Brendan Rodgers era to win the Premier League because they enjoyed one good season under Rodgers. But Liverpool have come close quite on quite a few occasions uh, to winning uh, the Premier League. You know, they've come close on quite um, a few um, occasions. I actually thought my perceptions were comparison regarding Liverpool. You know, obviously, you know, when they had Roy Hodgson, they were very, very poor. They were also very, very um, poor under um, 
uh, Kenny Dalglish and that. But you know, Liverpool um, have definitely no um, addressed uh, their uh, deficiencies um, in their uh, squad and that. And like I said, you've got to say now uh, they are uh, the best uh, team um, in England. But uh, like I said, you know, Jurgen Klopp is now starting to, you know, replicate, you know, what he did at Bush U Dortmund. Because I don't think he was too bad at Bush U Dortmund. Uh, you know, he did win a couple of titles with Bush U Dortmund. Obviously, before he was at Bush U Dortmund, he was um, at Mainz. He actually you know, ended up uh, getting a Mainz 05, was it, uh, relegated and that. But Jurgen Klopp hasn't really won much in terms of Masu wearing that. He hasn't really won that much. You know, he hasn't won nowhere near to the extent of what, you know, Guardiola's won and Jose Mourinho's won, like I said on my recent videos. But it doesn't it doesn't mean because you haven't won much silverware, uh, you know, that you're not uh, going to be uh, successful in that. But Jürgen Klopp now is going to start, you know, winning them um, a lot of uh, trophies uh, with Liverpool. I do believe that. And, you know, don't forget, he has got a contract with Liverpool until 2024. Because he signed, obviously, you know this the, uh, this uh, contract um, earlier on um, in the season. Um, Liverpool, I don't see them winning the Champions League. You know they won it last season. I probably presume it will be a foreign team this time. Uh, City won't win the Champions League because obviously, you know they haven't got a pedigree um, in the Champions League. Um, Man City are very inconsistent um, in the Champions League. You know, but yeah, so I think Liverpool win the Premier League definitely. Um, City might get runners up now, actually, you know, because Leicester, you know, lost at home to Southampton 2 1, you know, but it's between City and Leicester for second, I should believe. Um, so I'd probably say City second, Leicester third. Uh, there's loads of teams going fourth. Maybe perhaps Chelsea, you know, could actually know where I get a fourth uh, place, you know, to be um, quite um, honest with you in that. Um, but yeah, like I said, you know, with Solskjaer, um, he's not the he's not uh, the long term uh, solution uh, for uh, Man United. You know, like I've said on my recent videos, I have got um, element um, concerns uh, regarding uh, Solskjaer. And like I've said on my recent videos, one good result or a good couple of results uh, doesn't uh, change uh, my perception uh, regarding him. You know, definitely in that. And you know, Solskjaer has not got a decent pedigree behind him. He has not got a decent pedigree um, behind him in that. And I think as a manager, he's totally comparison to how um, he was um, as a player. Because as a player, you know, he was absolutely uh, fantastic uh, for us. But, you know, as a manager, you know, um, I've got element of concerns about him. Don't forget, for the vast majority of this season, he's been tactically naive. And, you know, some of his uh, substitutions um, have been uh, questionable. Solskjaer, you know, doesn't uh, really um, have um, a plan B. You know, don't get me wrong, you know, there's some aspects of me, you know, that credit him and that, you know, like I said, I praised him for what he did as a player for us and, you know, he's obviously got a lot of faith in his young players because Solskjaer did confirm when he first, uh, at, start this, at the start of this season, sorry, he did uh, confirm, this is his first full season, by the way, as Man United manager, he did confirm, you know, that the youngsters uh, would get uh, their um, opportunities and that. But I do believe we've got a lot of young players in the squad that will, you know, succeed um, at Manchester United, definitely. I think Greenwood's going to become a success. Greenwood's now on nine senior goals for the football club this season in 20-odd first-team appearances. And I think, you know, Solskjaer needs to start playing Mason Greenwood more regular in the Premier League. Greenwood is not yet on Rashford or Martial's level, but I think as he develops more, he'll progress to their level. And I actually do believe he will actually not end up overtaking them. Uh, Williams, Solskjaer now views him as his first choice first choice left back. Williams has been absolutely uh, fantastic for us. You know, Luke Shaw now has initially lost his place in the team since Brandon Williams has come on the horizon. Tuan Zebe has been injured quite a few times this season and I think he's currently injured at the moment, but I think in the games he's played and he's done well. Angel Gomez has played in the last couple of games well. He's made substitute appearances, hasn't he? But I did say, didn't I, you know, when he's so shy, you know, going to be convinced to give Gomez um, his opportunities. James Garner, I think, will also do well for us. But I think there's some young players in the squad as well that need to possibly be, lo be loaned out because I've got some element of concerns uh, regarding uh, some um, of the young uh, players, uh, definitely, in that. You know, Solskjaer isn't the right man. I hate to say that, you know, because... I do uh, love uh, Solskjaer um, a lot and uh, I love him a lot. And like I've said on my recent videos, whether he's managed jail tenure at Man United works out um, or not, you know, we'll never forget, you know, what he uh, had uh, done uh, for uh, the football club. But, you know, even though we've been inconsistent for the vast majority of this season, obviously we've enjoyed our worst start to a Premier League season for 30 years. 
you know, like I said, you know, we are still determined uh, to stick by him, you know, definitely in that, uh, we're still determined uh, to stick by him, but I'm very sceptical that we'll sack him at this present time, he'll still be here this month, he'll, I pre he probably, you know, will still be here um, at the end um, of the season, but I'm very sceptical, you know, that he will see out his three-year contract term at the football club, because he's on a three-year contract worth around uh, seven and a half uh, million uh, pounds um, a year and that, and, um, you know, Solskjaer's been here now over the year, he's now into his second year at the football club and he is aware that he's got many expectations to exceed and that and I just feel as though that the expectations um, are, are too um, high for him but he did actually say you know, he expects us to enjoy a successful 2020 so what he means in that aspect is that you know he expects us to enjoy a better uh, year uh, this year uh, than what we uh, saw uh, last year you know uh, definitely in that but um, yeah and um you know, I think, you know, disregarding Solskjaer being a club legend, I'd probably b believe, you know, would have uh, sacked him uh, by now, if, obviously disregarding being a club legend, but with him obviously, you know, being a club legend in that aspect, you know, where uh, the board um, are uh, softening uh, their stance, you know, definitely. But Solskjaer is, I think, being permanent man he's been permanent manager now uh, for 10 months, uh, more, is it, um, almost uh, 10 months, but I think one of the mistakes uh, the club uh, did uh, make, you know, was giving him uh, the job um, on um, a permanent uh, basis, you know, definitely in that, you know... Um, yeah, so we will uh, see uh, what um, happens um, anywhere. Um, obviously, you know, there's been some managers um, on our agenda, you know, who could replace Solskjaer. Um, I've been reading recent reports uh, regarding Max um, Ale uh, Max Allegri or Allegri or whatever, however you pronounce it. Um, it says now reportedly we're set to miss out on Masmiliano Allegri because reportedly now um, AC Milan uh, want to uh, recommend him um, in. In I think also by Munich um, have been in for Masmiliano um, Allegri by Munich have been in for him. I was reading reports a couple of days ago, like he updated you, and it did actually say you know, he want he's interested in taking the manful on at Manchester United. Is Masmiliano Allegri uh, went in for Masmiliano Allegri um, a while back? Uh, it was actually you no know, earlier on this season. It did say that at that point he was in negotiations uh, with Man United. Was Masmiliano Allegri? You know regarding what salary that he would earn. He did demand quite a few things as well. He did say that um he wanted to, you know, recommend Patrice Everin as one of his coaching staff. He wanted to bring two players, you know, with him. He wanted to bring Emre Chan to the club. He's a player anywhere we've been recently uh, linked with. He also wanted to bring uh, Mario uh, Mandzukic in, and this is what he did say um earlier on um, in the season that uh he said as well Masmiliano Allegri, you know, was learning English in preparation for his uh, potential move. Because obviously, you know, Masmiliano Allegri has never managed in the Premier League. So far to this point, he has spent the entirety of his managerial career in Italy. Um, emulated himself up over the years because he started managing small, various Italian clubs. Um, obviously, spent the entirety of his playing uh, career um, in Italy. And he's managerless now, obviously, because he did resign as Juventus manager at the end of last season. You know, so he's been managerless now. Is it for around five or six months? He's been managerless. As uh, Masmiliano Allegri, but he enjoyed was it five years there uh, with Juventus, and you know he progressed Juventus to two Champions League finals. He won five consecutive Serie A's with them. He also won uh, four uh, Coppa um, Italians, was it? Um, so you've got to admire, you know, what he uh, did uh, do with Juventus. But the Premier League is a different kettle of fish. Do you think if he can't come to managing the Premier League, you know, do you think he'll be able to replicate what he did uh, with Juventus and that? But I've got to probably say he's a better manager than Solskjaer. He's totally a comparison uh, to Solskjaer. Um, obviously, you know, Pochettino, you know, we've been long um, admirers um, of Mauricio, uh, of Mauricio uh, Pochettino. You know, we was in for him um, after the sacking of Jose Mourinho in December uh, 2018 and that. But obviously, like I said, our preference was Solskjaer because, you know, we saw that Solskjaer was a cheaper solution. Uh, Solskjaer knows the club inside out. Um, totally comparison to Pochettino because Pochettino doesn't know the club well like Solskjaer. And obviously, you know, effects on what Solskjaer did in that three-month period when he was the interim manager, you know, we decided uh, to keep um, him um, on. Pochettino's manager at um, the moment. He got sat from Tottenham, was it, um, a couple of uh, months ago. But Pochettino enjoyed a good five and a half uh, years there uh, with Tottenham. Uh, in the last couple of years of his tenure, you know, Tottenham, you know, were obviously, you know, title contenders and that. Uh, but for the vast majority of his tenure, you know, Tottenham, you know, were just like, you know, competing in and out um, in the top four. You know, but we wouldn't have to pay anything now in compensation anywhere uh, to recommend um, Richo uh, Pochettino in. 
But, you know, he's well Premier League proven his Pochettino. He's got managerial experience behind him. My only element of concern about Pochettino is that he hasn't won out um, in terms um, of silverware, and that's uh, my only element um, of concern. Um, that's my um, only um, element um, of concern, really. But um, I think, you know, if Pochettino came Man United, he'd, you know, fit the stature of the club. He'd fit uh, the stature of the club. Um, I think he'd be able to bring that winning mentality. He can also, you know, develop young players and that. Uh, but if Solskjaer was to be sat, then it's probably, you know, very, very imminent that Pochettino uh, would be um, our next manager, providing that he doesn't get another job. Because there was obviously no speculation about him going to buy Munich. There was also talks about him uh, going to Real Madrid. I think that he still talks about him uh, going uh, to uh, Real Madrid and that. So, yeah, Pochettino would be definitely you know, a lot more um, in, imminent uh, than Masmiliano uh, Maligri. And all um, of that. But like I said, um, Solskjaer give his overarching view um, on, you know, our fans... Yesterday, protesting, you know, Ed Woodward um, and the Glazers because I think we need to see a variety of changes at the club. Anyway, I don't only think we need a change of management. We need to get the Glazers out. We need to get Ed Woodward out. We need to get our current board out because our board um, have been a liability for several years. I think we also need to get rid of um, our coaching staff. So we need to see a variety um, of changes um, at the football club, uh, definitely, you know. But Solskjaer believes that, you know, the club uh, must uh, stick uh, to, uh, together. And that's what he said. It was a shame also last summer that, you know, we didn't uh, get um, a new uh, director um, of footballing because I did say, didn't I, that's one of the structural changes uh, that we uh, need to uh, see at um, uh, the football club, definitely. Um, I give you the news, didn't I, uh, today uh, regarding uh, Bruno uh, Fernandes. Um, I think a bit more um, additional information is updated about him. Nothing's been officially announced as yet, like I said. Uh, reportedly now we're set to put around the £65 million bidding for Bruno Fernandes. Uh, so I think uh, what he said yesterday, you know, we are determined to pay up to around £50 odd million pounds for him. So we'll pay around £50 odd million pounds up front. I think there's probably, you know, probably um, add-ons um, included um, in the deal and that, which does rise it to around to around 60 to £65 million. Pounds. Um, like I said today on my video this morning, uh, Portuguese uh, television uh, stations they said uh, that um, Bruno Fernandes to Man United uh, could have been officially um, announced uh, today but obviously no, uh, that's uh, not uh, the case I think Bruno Fernandes is set to travel to Manchester uh, sometime this week uh, to complete um, his move uh, to Old Trafford so it's more than likely um, it is uh, going to um, happen uh, Man United have held further more negotiations with Sporting uh, Lisbon uh, today on Friday, uh, Bruno Fernandes' agent and the Sporting Lisbon president, Federico Verandes, don't forget, you know, travel to London uh, to obviously, you know, talk uh, to um, Ed Woodward. Obviously, you know, they went uh, to um, our um, offices and that. This is what, you know, where uh, the company uh, did. But it actually, you know, said that we've agreed personal terms for Bruno Fernandes. He's set to sign a contract until 2025 and that. And obviously, he's going to get an increase um, in his wages. I think it did say we're set to offer him around um, £150,000 a week. But I do believe, you know, Bruno Fernandes is the, would be the right calibre player for Man United. He's obviously, and you know, we've seen him as a replacement uh, for Paul Pogba, uh, basically. You know, Bruno Fernandes can score goals, he can create chances, he can provide assists. You know, he's still under contract with Sporting Lisbon until 2023. Bruno Fernandes did sign this contract extension back in November um, of last year. But, you know, he's 25 years of age, so he's actually you know, nearly um, in his uh, prime. And, he, you know, he's it, it's um, in our category because Solskjaer does want to continue with the policy of recruiting young players in uh, to uh, the football club and that. And he's predominantly um, an attacking uh, midfielder, is Bruno uh, Fernandes. But I was surprised that we didn't get Fernandes last summer. Uh, I think the reason we didn't get him last summer is because we didn't put an official bid in. And I think we were not determined to meet Sport and Lisbon's valuation. City, Liverpool and Tottenham were also in for him last summer. Um, I think Tottenham are um, also in for Bruno Fernandes again now because they're looking for the replacement uh, for uh, Christian Eriksen and I think it's looking very imminent that Christian Eriksen is going to be uh, going uh, to um, into uh, Milan. You know, So looking likely Bruno Fernandes is going to be our first signing this year. 
our fourth signing overall under the um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer um, era. You know, I think we're seeing basically Bruno Fernandes as an alternative to James Madison because it's very, very um, unlikely that we're going to get James Madison in this uh, January uh, transfer window. You know, we're still um, in. You know, we're still keeping an interest um, in Jack Grealish from Aston Villa. You know, so there has actually you know, been um, a lot of uh, midfielders um, on our um, agenda, but. Uh, getting Bruno Fernandes is good, but I think we also need another midfielder. You know, we also need um, another uh, midfielder. I said, didn't I? You know, even before the window opened, I feel as though that Man United uh, need uh, two uh, midfielders. Uh, need uh, two uh, midfielders. But um, like I've said to you, there's more players that need to leave Man United. I've said to you, the players that need to go. Jones, he's one player that needs to be moved on. Too inconsistent. Matic needs to be moved on. Um, Lingard, I've got a lot of element of concerns now regarding Jesse Lingard. Um, he's been dropped now. Because obviously, you know, Solskjaer and Mike Phelan has be have become infuriated with him. I think the club in general um, have become um, infuriated with Lingard. And he's been here for several years. And Solskjaer has known Lingard uh, for uh, several years. And he's just not performing to the standards um, as we should um, expect from him. You know, uh, Jesse uh, Lingard. And he's, you know, we need a number 10. We haven't, got a, we haven't got a Galactico number 10. You know, Lingard's not reliable in that number 10. Mata can do well. Um, he can do well. Can matter. Um, I even though he had a good game against Norwich, I think he's passed it now as one well. matter. He's lost that yard of pace. Doesn't really get any, them chances anymore. Uh, but obviously now with us coming in view with Lingard, in view with Lingard, that may mean now Lingard gets more opportunities. Uh, uh sorry, one matter gets more opportunities. Andres Pereira, he's a liability. Despite the fact he's had a good couple of games this season, don't think he was too bad against Norwich. He created a lot of decent chances, but I still think you know it would be beneficial if the club did uh, move um, Andres uh, Pereira um, on. So we need we need we need another number ten, and I think you know Bruno Fernandes would be the right player. And um, he he currently plays in number eight for Sport and Lisbon. You know we're obviously you know willing to decide on what number he will wear. Will he wear the number eight in Man United or obviously you no know, will he wear um, another number? But I think he'll definitely you know, do well in the Premier League and that, you know, and he's playing his trade in Portugal at the moment. But I think he can come to the Premier League and replicate, you know, what he has uh, done um, in Portugal, uh, definitely in that. So Lingard and Pereira are two players I think that need to be moved on. Um, you know, Rojo got element of concerns about him, sustained quite a lot of injuries as a Man United player. I, I do believe Pob is going to be moved on as well. Uh, he may not leave this January, but um, I think you know, um, he will uh, leave uh, this summer if he doesn't uh, leave uh, this month. Pob has sustained a lot of injuries as a Man United player, he's missed the vast majority of our games this season, uh, due uh, to injuries, Paul Pobber. He's uh, recently had the operation on his ankle and according to him, you know, the operation went well. Uh, previously, not too long ago before that, he was out uh, with an ankle injury uh, for um, around uh, three months. But I just think, you know, Paul Popper doesn't want to be here. Uh, you know, I think he wants to leave to rejuvenate his career because analysing him at Juventus, I thought Paul Popper, you know, was one of the best uh, midfielders um, in the world. And I still think he is, but... I think the vast majority of his performances at Man United have been totally comparison uh, to his uh, ones um, at Juventus, uh, definitely. You know, and um, Solskjaer knows Pogba well because when Solskjaer managed the Man United reserve team, he watched some of this team at this day and age grow and develop. And one of them uh, players uh, was uh, Paul Pogba, you know, definitely. But the, even though he's been inconsistent, mainly for us, we'd still generate a substantial amount for his departure. I think we could still get around £100 million for him. You know, we wanted £150 million last summer. Last summer, Real Madrid were relentlessly you know, linked to him. Obviously, you know, there was talks about him making a return back to Turin. Like I said, he, there was speculation about him going uh, to Barcelona before. You know, and I'm surprised he didn't, he didn't leave under Jose Mourinho Pogba uh, because obviously he enjoyed a bad relationship with Mourinho. Um, you know, obviously with the sacking of Mourinho, you know, that's probably you know, what I'd convinced Paul Popper to stay at that time. You know, but I think he'll, you know, move on there definitely because he revealed last summer that he wanted to leave Man United because he said he was seeking uh, for um, a new uh, challenge. But I still believe he will uh, go uh, to uh, Real Madrid uh, definitely in that. Uh, so he should be back anyway, you know, in the next uh, couple of uh, weeks, you know, where uh, should uh, Pogba. But we need to move him on.
And I think um, he's, he's disrespecting the club. I've got the same perception on Mini Riley, all of his agent. He's also, you know, come out and criticised uh, the football club uh, not uh, too uh, long ago. Uh, Ashley Young, um, I think he'll leave the club. Um, he may not leave in Jan this January transfer window, but I think he will uh, leave um, in the summer, will um, Ashley Young, because it did say from the BBC recently, which is a reliable source, and they said that um, Inter Milan are set to sign Ashley Young on a free transfer when his current contract expires at the end of this season. You know, we don't want to... We're reluctant to let him go in this January transfer window. I think the main factor reason is, reflects on the injuries we've got. Uh, this is why, obviously, you know, want to uh, keep um, Ashley Young, even though he has initially yeah, lost um, his players um, in the team. But Inter Milan have been in talks um, over signing um, Ashley Young. I think it said uh, this was stemming from Fabrizio Romano, who's a t an Italian journalist, and he says uh, that Inter Milan um, have agreed a contract uh, until 2021 uh, with Ashley Young. You know, this is uh, what it uh, basically um, said. So it's not now only Inter Milan in for him now. I think, you know, Crystal Palace and Lazio have recently entered the race for him. Um, but Inter Milan have got a few players on their agenda. You know, they've got Lukaku and Sanchez uh, from us uh, last summer, uh, don't uh, forget. So, you know, I'll take that um, into um, account. But Young's been a long serving player at the football club. He's now into his ninth season at Man United. He's enjoyed their uh, mate uh, years um, here, you know. So, yeah, so I think we need to definitely know, consider uh, moving um, him um, on. Young has made a total of 261 appearances for the football club in all competitions. Um, you know, since we got him from Villa uh, back in uh, 2011. Uh, he wasn't named in the squad against Norwich, uh, you don't forget. So, yeah. So, the question is, you know, can Manchester United end unbeaten, end Liverpool's unbeaten run next Sunday? Now, like I said at the beginning of the video, the preview will be coming up uh, later on in the week. It will be coming up Thursday um, or Friday. And, yeah, so this is a bit of build-up to the game. But um, as oh, as well... Uh, I'll give you the preview for the uh, Wolves game in the FA Cup third round replay. Uh, that's coming up. That will be uh, tomorrow uh, sometime. It won't be in the morning. I don't think it will be tomorrow afternoon or tomorrow night. The preview for the, the, preview for the Man United uh, Wolves uh, game will be uh, coming up in that. So anyway, guys, drop your comments, likes below on the channel. If you do, consider subscribing um, as always. And take care. God bless. And I'll see you all again very, very soon.